This show is proudly brought to you by the Hashtag Me Network. And now, Hashtag Radio NZ. Slash art, dash art, slash art, dash art, slash art, dash art, slash art, com, dot com, dot com, dot 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 com, slash art, dash art, Welcome to Hashtag Radio, I'm Fit McAwesome. I'm Chris McAwesome. And I'm V8 Maddie. And on this week's Uncultured Roundup of Social Media, Web, Tech, Gaming and Pop Culture, we have uh, a heap of stuff we've been to a few events this week. Yeah, Alienware. Yeah, um, we went to the Assetto Corsa launch. Yeah, got some drones. Yeah, drones and stuff. Uh, we've got some gaming because, of course, it was uh, Gamescom this week. That's right. I haven't been to any events, um, but I have been to my computer monitor <laughs> quite a long time. <laughs> um, so we'll be talking about all that a little later on, um, as well as uh, some of our favourite trailers uh, from Gamescom. Yes, indeed. Uh, but we start the show every week with the news with Chris McAwesome. And now the news with Carice McAwesome. Yeah, so this week in the news, it's been very interesting. So Twitter has confirmed that they've shut down 360,000 accounts for threatening or promoting terrorist attacks since the middle of 2015. Jeez. Since February, an additional 235,000 accounts were suspended. Now, for the same reason? <clears throat> yeah. The, um, Twitter relies primarily on user reports to identify offending accounts and has increased the size of the team reviewing the reports to handle the influx. I wonder if that's including douchebags that just tweet stuff to be dicks. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, but how much of that's genuine people making genuine threats and how much of it is just douchebags? Tw- Twitter will only be the whiny crybabies left soon if they keep ditching everyone based on whiny crybaby reports. <laughs> 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 Isn't that Twitter though? Um, Uber. Uber. Love Uber. Yeah, has bought self driving truck startups as well as partnering with Volvo, which is valued at $300 million as it advances towards its self driving technology. Now, Uber is looking to position itself in the trucking industry with $724 billion per year. Crikey. Wow. That'll work in places like Australia where there's roads and stuff with just nothing happening except trucks driving. Yeah, so where other companies are looking at the Google... Car. car. Oh, not Google car. Yeah, but like the self-driving car. Yeah. Um, Uber's looking at self-driving trucks. Hmm, wow. Hmm, Google car. I have to uh, talk about my really bad Uber experience at some stage. Maybe I'll do that after the news. Do that now. Do you reckon now? Yeah. So you know how much I love Uber, love... I've How much do you about, love Uber? I love Uber. Look, we don't own How a much? car over here in Australia, and we use Uber to get everywhere. Ah. Like thousands of dollars worth is how much. <laughs> yeah, in the last few months, yeah. But um, I've had like this really, really bad experience with uh, another Uber product. Not the car product, but Uber Eats. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the food delivery. Yeah. Mm. So over here, there's like five or six different businesses doing that. So it's like Deliveroo, Eat Now. Um, Deliveroo? You... Yeah, <laughs> Deliver- fun, funnily enough, <laughs> Deliveroo it. isn't even an Australian product. Yeah, we'll, only we'll just hop over it. with a feed, mate. That's the one. <laughs> but Uber Eats launched a month ago over here. Yeah. And there was a code to get, um, I think it was $20 free credit or something on your first order. Yep. Used that. And I had a really good... Um, service with that one like really good experience i ordered this amazing chicken it got delivered i actually had a better experience than my colleague who was sitting next to me her food got delivered downstairs and mine got delivered to the door yeah yeah we ordered at the same time um however after when i tried to repeat that experience <coughs> about a week later said, oh, i'm gonna buy myself some lunch get it delivered i'm too busy to go out for lunch um that time at took them an hour before the restaurant decided they weren't even going to make the order or bother getting the Uber driver to pick it up. Mm. So I was like, okay, that's not Uber's fault. That's the restaurant's fault. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they've just cancelled the order and it hasn't gone out. Um, 
Then a week after that, I thought, okay, that wasn't Uber's fault. I'll try it again. This time around, the food, the restaurant accepted the order, cooked it, delivered, sent it out. The driver picked it up. I saw that he made it to the building and never made it to me. Yeah, so I said it was delivered, but it was actually never delivered. It was never delivered, and I got charged for it. Oh, that's balls. Mm. Yeah, I was Did really some, hungry. Someone at reception had a good feed. Yeah, somebody in our building. We were, what, 14 floors in our building? Yeah. So somebody on one of those 14 floors got an amazing feed. Yeah, but normally they send it up. Like last time, we've had deliveries, got well, to different floors, yeah. and they send it up to the right floor. Yeah, well, that same day, I got something delivered to me from a company, and it got delivered to the office next door, and she just came and dropped it off to me. Yeah, it's not a big Because she couldn't yeah. eat it. <laughs> <laughs> if she could have eaten it, you would never have seen it. But she enjoyed my fried chicken later on. Yeah. Talking more about the Uber thing, mm-hmm. um, their, their self-driving taxi service is actually going live to the public later this month. Ooh. With the, self-driving taxis? Yeah, so the, uh, the Volvo XC90 special vehicles... Yeah. Um, they're testing it out in Pittsburgh in late August, so you'll be able to um, order an Uber and you might get one of these self-driving cars. Now, it's not going to be self-driving entirely. Um, there's a driver there. There's going to be a driver in the car, um, which is more to do, I believe, with the laws mm-hmm. around it at the yeah. moment. So until the laws get changed, they need to have someone sitting mm-hmm. there just in case. Um, but if you are in Pittsburgh and you do get these Ubers, it's going to uh, be a free ride as well. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so those ones will be actually out in service offering rides and you won't get charged for them. That's going to be awesome PR for Volvo. Yeah, yeah. you'll be sitting there with fingers crossed hoping that you get one of those. Yeah. So they're, like you they're, um, they're aiming to have 100 self-driving cars on the roads of Pittsburgh by the end of the year. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you kind of do that here, like crossing your fingers, hoping that you'll get an Uber Black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I got an Uber Black the other day as my Uber X, and I was stoked. Had this really nice um, Mercedes pull up, and yeah. Look a little flash. Yeah. Only the best for you, Philip. <clears throat> but only paid X, Uber X prices, which is awesome. Yeah. Okay, Gorka. Ah, yes. We know Gorka? I know Gorka's gone broke. I've heard but... of Gorka. I don't know what they do. They're, they're, a, they're a gossip site, gossip they're, news. They're the ones that get, uh, find sex tapes about dirty old uh, wrestlers that no one actually wants to watch. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. old wrestlers? Yeah. yeah. Hulk Hogan, <laughs> naked. <laughs> so they're actually shutting down this week. Oh. Ending, ending the online news and gossip's 14-year-old reign. It was going for 14 years. Uh, the decision comes two days after Univision Holdings won a bankruptcy auction to acquire Gorka. For $135 million. Oh, so they're getting bought out and shut down. Yeah. Oh, no, they're shutting down. So they've been bought out. Mm. But it's, you know how you've got to go through that process of buying. You don't actually own it right there and then after you've bought it. I've never yeah. bought a company before. I don't know. Yeah, so it's shut down. They're going to close the doors and then it'll probably be reopened. So they'll re- rebrand, relaunch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking so. Um, but they actually beat Ziff Holdings, and Ziff Holdings, I think, is the guy, I might be wrong on this, um, the guy who originally started Gorka. Oh, okay. And Univision out, managed to outbid him. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lenovo. I oh, know those guys. Yeah. Lenovo. Yeah. Their loss-making mobile unit will return to profit in the second half of the fiscal year in 2017, according to the company uh, chairman. After the mobile unit beat expectations in its latest quarterly net profit announcements. Uh, so they actually, this quarter, was they did Mahomi, higher. Was it Mahomi Huawei? What? Huawei. Huawei? He's the boss of Lenovo. Did he say that? Yeah. Yeah. No, we're boys. Huawei? Huawei. His last name's Legs. No, it's not him then. What? We're not talking about him then. Oh, no, you said Huawei. That's what I said, the boss. He's the CEO, sorry. Did you say it's Yemen? Yeah. Okay. As you were. <laughs> Let's drop some names, Fed. Let's drop some names. Oh yeah, 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 I know that guy. Yeah, he's one of my boys. Yeah, <laughs> well, it turns out it's not your boy. No, it wasn't my boy. Ah, uh, yeah. So they actually 
because Lenovo own what is it, Motorola? Yeah. Yeah. So they, <clears throat> to everybody's surprise, they did really well this quarter. It is actually surprising though, because Moto hasn't done well since Google bought them um, off Motorola. Mm. Um, also in the mobile unit division, Samsung has <laughs> also posted. Unit division. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, carry on. Has, has also posted its best quarterly profits ever, thanks to its Samsung S7 Galaxy range. Uh, raising its value by three points on the share market. Is that the new tab, is it? Yeah. Helping to boost that. It's like 1600 bucks here or something. That's crazy. Whoa! It's insane. It's off the hook. It's ridiculous. It's cheaper to get a car than ring someone. You may as well drive over there. 1600 I'm going to double fine. check, but I'm pretty sure. You're pretty sure? Pretty sure, to be sure. <laughs> That is absolutely insane. But yeah, um, in Samsung's, Samsung Electronics, it's actually the mobile division that's actually pushed up its profits. Did I say tab? I meant note. Did, did I say note or did I just say tab? I can't remember. You said tab, tab but I know you. Yeah, oh, you it's the note. note. Yeah. The tab's actually a really boring device. What's the tab? The tablet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The note's pretty fucking cool. Though. Yeah, I did mean the note. Um, yeah. Let's let's just have a look. I can choose my color black or gold. Sixty four <laughs> gig. Hit me with that gold, baby. That gold one's actually nice looking. Yeah. Where's the flame and price? I also like the gold. The gold made out. They've got like this um, charcoal gold. It's like, like this deep, really dark gold. I might get that for my next one. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's actually cheaper here than the black or the silver. Really? Yeah. I might get the gold then. My phone's been held together by... Plasters? Plasters. <laughs> <laughs> it's Band-aids. a poor little wounded piece of rubbish, isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. It's not rubbish. It still works. And, like, yeah. literally, the screen can disconnect from the actual, <laughs> actual phone, and it still works. Okay, choose an operator. Choose a colour. Yeah, one thousand five hundred and ninety-eight ninety-nine. That's nuts. Wow. So sixteen hundred bucks. It's funny because the, the way Samsung got to where they are was because they had a great product at a lower price point than the iPhone. Yeah. A lot of people moved over from Apple for that. Yeah. And now they've they've still I'd still say they've got a superior product, but they're more than the iPhone or the same price as the iPhone. There's no reason for me to buy it. 1600 for me is like the choice between whether or not I pay my mortgage for the next two weeks or <laughs> we'll keep that. That's insane, isn't it? Do we have more news? Well, yeah, 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 we do. Um, <laughs> Cisco has confirmed it's moving ahead with its job cutting as the company changes from switches to software. With 5,500 jobs still yet to be removed and reinvested into its key software growth areas. So, we actually talked about Cisco uh, job cutting last year. Yeah. The continuing. It was coming. Yeah. And so, back then, I think it was around 10,000 jobs worldwide. They've got 5,500 jobs to go. So, what's the core business for Cisco now? They used to be online communications, but now that would be getting eaten into. Uh... Yeah, so they're going Skype, for software. Uh, they're going to software for the Internet of Things. Okay. Which is actually their main focus. Uh, and now, finally, my last bit of news. You can track where your filetto fish came from. Yeah. <laughs> well, kind of. Um, as Oceans, an international conservation organisation, together with Google and Skytrues, um, are combining to use aerial and satellite images to track fishing trawlers Hmm. with the launch of Global Fishing Tracker within the next few weeks. Uh, So this will allow the public, non-governmental organisations and local authorities to monitor coastlines and marine conservation areas, follow individual boats in nearish real time and track what boats in particular flag are doing. And then it's tracking that boat all the way back to the port. Let's hope some of these boats are doing some legitimate fishing. Because there's Mm. so many dodgy stories about the fishery guys, isn't there? Yeah. That's an awesome use for tech, though. Yeah. Tracking the boat. Tracking the boat. Yeah, it's not so much tracking the boat, but you said tracking your food, sort of it. Yeah, catching and stuff. It tracks 
it'll track that boat and then that boat if, uh, when it goes into ports to unload all of that's tracked and then, so you can actually literally track from the sea to to your plate so you'll be able to actually jump on and go wow this burger sat in the freezer at uh, the Huntley McDonald's for 16 months yeah but- yeah <laughs> before it was a greasy uh, bread ball on, but before the... before that, it came from a uh, boat from over the air, and they caught it on that date. And yeah, and it was they caught... also caught a couple of dolphins. Yeah, it was caught by John Smith, yeah. who happened to be smoking a Winnie Blue at the time. And yeah, yeah, I don't think so... they smoke the blue ones when they're at sea, mate. Maybe. No, they'd be smoking the, the dark grizzly ones, the, the full Winnie reds. We reach, mate. <coughs> so someone actually said it's going to be great for countries like um, Madagascar um, and Antarctica, where you can't actually track uh, whether what trawler fishing trawlers are actually doing in the area, lack of resources and all that kind of stuff. Um, so now this will actually be able to see if anybody's catching whales and all that kind of shit. <laughs> catching the whales. <laughs> Dumping the um, dumping all the fish that they're not allowed when they're over their quota. Yeah. Oh, you just there's so many tragic stories that come out of that. I reckon that's the worst one is the dumping of the fish. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, we caught too much, so we're just going to dump a whole lot of fish. Yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> Fucking hell! Why didn't you just stop fishing sooner, you idiots? Yeah, it's just insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, and that's the news. Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. I love the news. Um, I've got a bit of news too um, to do with battery life. Dun, dun, yes. Dun. So scientists at time. MIT who formed the company Solid Energy have managed to create a new type of battery that will double the life of the existing batteries. No. So they can either double the life of your existing battery or make the new battery half the size and last the same length of time. How? How? Magic in science and stuff. (laughs) So it's an anode-free lithium metal unit, meaning it's um, basically the same um, when it comes to safety and stuff as the current lithium-ion batteries. But it's yeah. only half the size because instead of a graphite anode, they are using a thin lithium metal foil, which holds more ions, which means greater energy capacity. So it essentially doubles the uh, the life of the battery, or you can keep the same life and reduce it by half the size, which is good for um, wearables and stuff like that as well, that mm. they could make the batteries the same size and double the life of them. So my that's cool. So my watch could last three days instead of one day, does or one watch, a day and a half. Does your watch actually last that long? A yeah, day and a half, roughly. Hmm. Yeah, they don't charge it. My Fitbit Blaze lasts me a good five days. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of that. A watch that actually lasts as long as a watch should, roughly. Yeah, it's nice to. Only I like the idea of have to charge it now and then. With a watch, yeah. you know, plug your phone in each night, sure, but we don't all want to have that stupid scenario where we've got a whole bunch of stuff plugged in every night. What a pain! Yeah, yeah. And that, actually, the one that I always forget to plug in is always my laptop. I remember the phone, I remember the watch. I forget the laptop. And I'll be on the train on the way to work in the morning, and I'll be like, "Oh, I can do." No, I can't. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So you were um, saying earlier there, something about um, the Alienware thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. So this week we went to an Alienware product launch. I actually took Trey along with me uh, because he's really hard into his PC gaming. Was was that Trey in the photos looking all all swaggy McGangster? Yeah. Okay. Well, he was sitting there. So what Alienware actually did for their product launch, which is really cool, is they sponsored a internet cafe. Yep. And they went in and replaced all of the computers that were in there with all their latest Alienware computers. Nice. And gaming setups. So the launch was on Thursday, which is when they opened it up 
uh, to select few. And then for the remainder of, oh, no, for seven days, I think it is. I might be a little bit longer. Yeah, seven days. Um, the public can go in there and use it for free. Wicked. At the Internet Cafe. The yeah. said that's awesome. Yeah. What do you, yeah. do you but, but, sign up for a certain amount of time or something and then have a go? I assume um, so. Yeah. I'd say they'd have a limit on there. It was like that with our Commodore Normal. 64 at primary school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, a, we had a sign-up sheet and you got five minutes or whatever each, which was how long it took for the tape recorder to load the game. We used to have the same thing at our school with the Apple IIe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they... And they used to wheel it from class to class on the big trolley. Yeah, oh, so nice. the Internet Cafe is in Chatswood and it's called City Hunter Cafe here in Sydney. Yeah. Internet Cafe. Sydney. In Sydney. Um... But it was just Hello, really Sydney. awesome. It was actually really cool to go into an internet cafe that had all the latest equipment. Most internet cafes you walk into, the PCs are at least five years old and they're gungy, dirty looking keyboards and mice. And Yeah. And this yeah. is just all of it. So there's all your curved screens. It's, it's your character and charm, I believe they call yeah. it. <laughs> it's, it's got a certain patina on the mouse right, yeah, you've got a just... marketing spin come on <laughs> and I think the other thing that I really loved about this um, product launch was it was completely aimed at the consumer so it wasn't it wasn't just a product launch where only media get to go um, it was available to the public yeah. to people that matter to all the PC gamers so it'll be interesting to see after a week how um, all those PC gamers actually liked it. Yeah, well, it's still going to be going after a the week. They're continuing it on as an ongoing relationship where it'll continue to be a branded internet cafe with the top of the range of gear. Yeah, that's cool. cool. Yeah, so it's basically a full-time um, what is it, showroom that you can actually go in there and game on. Mm, so I now know where my son and his friends will be. <laughs> They've been not be as an hour and a half away from home. Be a train. Yeah, be a train. We ain't driving. No. <laughs> um, so this week I got to attend uh, the Aceto Corsa launch. Don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this was one of those occasions where I walked in and I was like, man, Matt would be so happy here. Why? Um, <sighs> because it was a driving game for starters. Like you walked in and the first thing they had there was a full driving setup with. Uh, Brand new Thrustmaster steering wheels and uh, a proper racing seats at there, and so you're fully kitted out, huge um, screen in the front, and playing Assetto Corsa on console. Oh, yay! Yeah, Mate, um, my my racing setup is just as cool as theirs. <laughs> 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 The highlight, of course, was the game. Um, and I am not a massive driving fat car fan, but I did have a look into a set of course at a full PC. And like, Matt, Matt is really angry right now. I know, because you should see him on screen right now. He's just looking down like, fuck you, Fid. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes? Go ahead. <laughs> Can you carry on, you heathen. Yes. I did have a look into a set of course uh, on PC, and like, Matt will be able to... Talk probably more about what it's like, but it's <laughs> the premier driving game for PC. Would you say it's it's one of the leading racing sims along with um 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 the well yeah let's just stick to it. So yes, yeah, um, amazing graphics and stuff like that. But so after I saw what it was, like yeah, uh, it's what you expect on a PC. And I was expecting though for it. <laughs> I was expecting it to not be as good on console after seeing what it was like on PC. Yeah, and it's always yeah. going to look better on PC, mate. Don't yeah, hundred uh, percent. No denying that. And so, yes, it was scaled down, but the it still looked like a beautiful game. And the one thing I did, I drove on th- one track on three different years. So there's some tracks that are on there. Some tracks I'm not allowed to talk about, so I can't remember which one. So I'm just going to say. <laughs> There was a certain track that I drove on, and I drove on the 1977 version, the 1988 version, and the 2016 version of, of that the track. track. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And driving on those different tracks with the same car, I was driving on a, uh, I chose the Pagani Zonda. As you do? Yep. Face 
Melter? I, don't look at me. I only know, like, Toyota. Yeah, well, there's Toyota <laughs> on there as well. Ford and Holden. Um, I actually Honda. think Toyota might be the only Japanese Just car saying. on there. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, keep going. Anyway, but driving on each tr- on that same track on those three different generations, using the same car, was a completely different experience of gameplay. So the quality of the um, tarmac was noticeable. Was the first one in black and white? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but but there was a noticeable difference driving on it. Like if it was because of the older tarmac technology or whatever you know that they were using, it didn't hold the road as well, so you had to corner, uh, slow down the corner more so. Um, on some of those straights uh, where there was obviously divots or something in the road, you felt divots it. Divots in the road. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it made a big difference. I, it was something that I haven't experienced that much in a racing game previously, where the quality of the track affects the driving experience. Mm. 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 But I, so I've only spent an hour or so playing it. Um, Matt's going to be doing a full review of it and be able to give a far more qualified opinion on it than I am. Yes, and that's for console, of course, not for PC. Yeah, um, because on- it's been out on on PC for a long, long time. So this is the big, exciting launch of it coming to console. Um, yeah. Now, also just out now is F one twenty sixteen as well. So if you're a fan so of driving been, games, that's out. Yeah, you've now been as talking well. about this game coming for a while too. Really been looking forward to it. Um, I've I've been quietly asking behind the scenes to try and get a copy of it on anything. So far, no yeah. no joy with anything, but um, if I could get it on PC, I'd be a happy man, so I could actually tweak it up and see what it looks like um, yeah. running some higher specs. Um, so yeah, yeah. F1 2016 is out now. It's um, the latest and greatest. I've checked out a few other reviews from some, um, some more higher up the chain media outlets that have actually had the game for review, and... Um, they have there's a really good one on inside sim racing they've done a comparison today with pc ps4 and xbox one to say you know obviously pc is always going to be better because you can tweak up your yeah frame rates and all that jazz but um it's almost an unfair comparison yeah but uh ps4 came out well on top of xbox as far as it graphically and stuff so if you're a fan of the uh, a fan of F1 and you have the choice, go PC, PS4, or then Xbox One. Mm. Awesome. Um, <coughs> drone. Sorry. Oh yes. Droning yeah. on and on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we have got our hands on at the moment with uh, three three uh, parrot mini drones. Yeah, mini drones. So we've got. Do you remember the name of them all? The jet, which is the drone that's like the car. Yeah, so it's a two wheeler, two wheel car racing thing. drone. A two yeah. wheel car would be a motorbike, guys. You put it side by side, not yeah. <laughs> from... yeah. It's like a yeah, it's a racing drone anyway. Yeah. Now that one's pretty cool. That one has a camera and a microphone on it, so you can you're streaming from it. Uh, in real time, and then you can actually talk to somebody through the uh, drone. And it jumps. Yes, it jumps. Like really high. Yeah, How high is really high? 72 centimetres. 72 centimetres. Yeah, so it can actually jump up onto tables, so that's what we were practising last night. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping onto people's laps. It can also, um, what's, it'll jump 72 centimetres. And length. So you can go up and lengthwise. Horizontally. You think, you think horizontally it could go further or if it was moving along at pace? I don't no, think it can move and jump at the same time. No, it needs to stop. Yeah. Oh, what? <coughs> and then you control the angle um, of how high the kind of degree of angle that you want to jump at. That's the correct terminology. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the hydrofoil. Yeah, that one's cool. That one's weird. It's um, the flying boaty type one. 
Yeah. yeah, so you can disconnect the drone and fly it. It did say you could fly the drone. The I was told, sorry, that you could fly the hydrofoil, which you can't. Have you tried? Yeah, I, have I don't tried. think you tried hard enough. Um, but it, it's <laughs> super fast on water. Technically, when a hydrofoil is up on the foil, it is deemed to be flying. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So it does go really fast uh, in the water. Um, <laughs> but the, it was supposed to be able to turn really sharply, but it doesn't. It's not sharp at all. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm Like I said, I've only had a quick play with it, so there may be tricks I'm yet to find out. I'd no say need. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's the... The Mars? Yes. This yeah. is the Lego one. Yeah. So this is the drone that... What? Works. It like can carry... Connect. Yeah, it can connect with Lego and carry cargo. Yeah. Um, only a certain weight, naturally, but... So you could get your Lego Batman set out and you could fly Batman around and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, oh, that's what I thought was awesome as well. So we've had Star Wars... Um, uh, troopers on there, stormtroopers on there. Yeah, flying around the house. Yeah, as you do. We may have chased the cat with it. <laughs> she wasn't impressed. No. Hypothetically. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've, we've only had uh, those for a couple of days, so we'll have a full review on the website of those. Um, as Initial well as... thoughts? Are they worth the money? Um, I think they're cool. Is okay, so. It's going to be an entry level drug if you've never owned a drone. It's really aimed at kids, but they are aimed at kids, yeah. Um, and they're an expensive toy, but a very cool toy. Okay, what about uh, durability? Some... How, how do they look sturdy wise? Oh, they bounce. Yeah, they bounce, so you can drop it from a great height. It's ideal so for Carice. <laughs> yeah, well, we've let our young fellow, like you know how rough he is with stuff. Yep. Yeah, we've let him just go with it and just play with it and not supervise him barely at all. Like, not tell him not to do stuff with it, apart from fly it in the lounge while we're talking, because yeah. it's noisy. So um, have you had he... the boat in your pool? Yeah. Yeah. Is the pool big enough? Uh, yeah, <coughs> kind of. Not really. Wait, what <laughs> sort of be, situation? It would be more fun on a lake. So you'd yeah, want to like, take it to a lake? A yeah. beach. I don't know about the beach. Be a bit choppy. Yeah. You need a smooth bit of water, I suppose. Yeah. I think a river? It'd be a bit of fun on a lake, I reckon. Lake or a river? Yeah. Yeah. You gotta watch out for crocs and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gotta watch out for the croc at you. Yeah, you for living in Australia. Um, yeah, it's... They are expensive. So you're looking over, I think, 150, I think, Australian. Yeah. So it's it's not cheap. That's for all of them, isn't it? It's not a cheap toy. No, it's not. For a kid. So it's durable, but it doesn't look it. No. It feels flimsy. When I first pulled out the mini drone, the um, the Mars, yeah. yeah, I honestly thought to myself, that's not going to survive the weekend. Yeah. But... I've countlessly hit the walls with it. Yeah, I've countlessly <laughs> seen it get dropped from mid-flight. Uh, one of the funny things that did happen was um, our youngest was flying it yesterday afternoon and the battery ran flat on the tablet that he was using Yep. mid-flight. And, and I, I thought what would happen once it was disconnected, it would do an emergency landing or something. Yeah. But it just sat there hovering with it's nothing like connected off. to it. <laughs> Yeah, you would think that there'd be some sort of lost signal and it would just slowly go down, but it doesn't. No, I guess if you were if you're flying it over water or something, you don't want that to happen, do you? You don't want it to just yeah, drop yeah, out yeah. of the sky. And what was cool was I was able to connect to it via my phone and then land it. Nice. Yeah. So you didn't yeah. need to press a button on it or anything. No. To, to no, change was what was to... controlling. Yeah, I was just able to, obviously lost connection from the other device, so I was able to then connect to it from my device and then safely land it. Okay, so I'm just looking at some prices of those things here in um, mm-hmm. the good old New Zealand, and they're expensive. Yeah. What are we looking at? Um, for your jumpy one? Yeah. The place, the, the website I'm looking at, I won't, I won't name the outfit, but they say it's on special for 229 Whoa. Wow, that's a lot more expensive than it is over here. Jump on eBay. Is it the parrot 
Buzz or Max or there's all different colours with different names, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah the jumping one. race mini drone, yeah, they're all two twenty nine. Wow. Um what was the other one called you had? Uh the Mars. Mars. Let's see one called Mars. Not on this site anyway. But yeah, if that's an indication. The uh, yeah. the jumping mini drone is two hundred and twenty nine on special. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so the Mars I actually really liked. Whoa! The hydrofoil two hundred and eighty. The hydrofoil is quite a news. Yeah, so here it's around about two forty. Yeah, so it's about, it's about two ninety here. Yeah. It looks that cool. One is, yeah, that one is one you'll want to um keep away from cats and small children from playing with on their own because it is a polystyrene body. Okay. Yeah. So it's gonna get hammered. Yeah. yeah. Um but it, it's not like that soft polystyrene, it's a nice firm polystyrene. Polystyrene, it's just polystyrene. Yeah, but as I mean like once the cat gets a hold of it it's gonna be fucked. Yeah. <laughs> What's you a cat going to do to it? What do your cats do to these things? I've cats are never had a creatures cat when they get hold of polystyrene and stuff. Eating polystyrene? Well, we did have one cat that used to steal silverware. Yeah. <laughs> that was my cat. That was from Harwood. <laughs> that cat was from Harwood, though. Yeah. Your cat was gangster. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, they are expensive. Um, would you say it's worth it? I would say the mini drones are worth it. Like, I think definitely the jumping racing one, whatever the name of that one is. Yeah, that one's quite cool. That one's very solid as well. Yeah. Um, and I would say that the Mars, the um, mini drone, is worth it. Well, that one's way cheaper. They've just found the, the Mars one for 148 Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And that one there's a very cool one as well. Um, the hydrofoil, I think, for the price of it, you're only going to get limited use as well. Uh, it doesn't do live video, so it is basically just a boat that you're going to be playing with on the water. Yeah, and if you're going to spend that sort of money, there's probably better boats you could buy. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So out of the two, I would definitely recommend the mini drone and the um, jumping one, what racing are the, one. What are the range like? Yeah. Do you know what the range is like? Uh, no, not off the top of my head, but I was using the little one outside the other day and I got a decent amount of height out of it. Yeah, I was going to try it um, this week. I know the... Well, there's the... some fun stuff to try. What yes. you can do is, is tie a um, reel of cotton to it and then let it fly, winding out your cotton, and then you can measure how long that was when it ran out of range. That's going to be fun. That's... That's <laughs> rather you than me, but there's a way you could do it instead of yeah. just using your eyechromata. Yeah. Yeah, or I could just read the instructions. Surely it's got it in there. I would say so. I don't know. I'm just I'm looking through some specs and stuff. I can't find anything that tells you how far it'll fly or what the I range know the is. Be- the yeah, Bebop is, uh, which is their full size uh, drone, is limited. Yeah. Like they've intentionally got a limit on that one for legal reasons so that they can just scrape under the pro category. The hydrofoil's got a camera, uh, right? No. Oh, it has, yeah. but it only takes snapshots and it only takes snapshots from the bottom of the, the actual hydrofoil. Drone. Yeah. No, that's the Mars. The Mars takes photos. Yeah, that one does too. It's got a camera in the bottom as well. Why would you take a bottom photo oh, of the water? That's what I, mean. that I don't silly. think that's right. I think you're wrong. Maybe when it's up and it's actually cruising, it's aiming a different way. Maybe. I don't know. If it's stormed off to get it now, he's going to prove a point. <laughs> yeah. Angry McCorsum. Take real snapshots. It's in the box. Because you can disconnect the drone part and have it as a um, standalone flying drone, but it doesn't have the protected propellers on it. Okay. I'm a bit dubious about allowing the kids to fly that one around without the protection around the propellers. Yeah, because they're just going to smash it to pieces. Yeah. Oh, so you can connect the drone, the flying bit, yeah. on an angle so then it can take photos ahead. Behind. Or behind. Yeah. So it's, so it's still silly for that to have the camera. You wouldn't want to be taking photos while it's on the hydrofoil. Yeah, you would. We'll try it anyway. We'll review those. 
I'm yeah. looking forward to that. I want to see yeah. some video footage of Carice smashing stuff. Oh, I've got that already. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, Gamescom. Gamescom. That's... So PlayStation weren't there, and Xbox weren't there, yeah. Nintendo weren't there. So all the hardware companies, no shows. Cool. It was Which is purely a software bizarre, event. is it not? Yeah, well, PlayStation usually do a PlayStation experience, but they've announced that in a couple of weeks' time they're doing um, an unveil of something from there. Who are? PlayStation. They're doing. Uh, they're unveiling some new product in the States. So they've decided not to go to um, Gamescom to do their own thing. Well, I just went to a website then, and it auto-played a whole lot of terrible music. I hope that didn't come through, but it might have. So no, that, no. everyone might have experienced that. No, no, it didn't come through. Well, I could hear it in my headphones. <laughs> anyway, what was your favourite trailer from the event? Because, like I said, it was a software one. Uh, we got to see, didn't so much get to see new games, but we got to finally see gameplay of, of games that were previously announced at C3 or last year. I'm liking the looks of the the Deuce X Mankind Divided. That's looking quite cool. Yeah. Deus X. Is, is that how you say it? Yeah, Deus, Deus X. X is, yeah. I was like, well, Deus X. Yeah. <laughs> Deus X. Yeah, it's a long-standing franchise, that one. Um. The, yeah, that looks quite cool. Have you had a look at that one? I haven't actually looked much at that one at all. Tell me more about it. Um, it's 2029 and everyone's got guns and they're shooting each other. Cool. <laughs> um, some of them are wearing fancy jackets. Some of them have robot arms. And um, it's not that far away, 2029. No. No. You know, but I suppose back in the in the eighties, they were all oh, wait till twenty ten. Yeah, everything. Every, you know, we're going to be yeah. having hoverboards and. Still angry about that. <laughs> I feel like technology's <laughs> let me down. Self lacing shoes. Well, the other thing. Oh, those um, those came out. So there's there guys. Are. There's guys in this um, Deus Ex running around that look like Oscar Pistorius. <laughs> Got funny, fancy, bendy legs, and they're, and they're heavily friends. armed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the game that um, I'm excited about is we finally got to see actual gameplay from Resident Evil Seven. Ah, Res Evil Seven. Yeah. So it looks good. It's definitely a step away from um, Resident Evil's style. Um, I, they did. They, it's funny. They made a big point of saying that the demo was going to be nothing like the game, same as what PT did with Silent Hills. Mm-hmm. But it looks very similar to the game, to, to the demo. So it's first person. Well, it has uh, to be, doesn't it? Walking around, it's going to be VR, so it has to be. Um, I think the only thing that they're, they're trying to cover themselves with is when they say that is so that the actual, um, like. Graphically and everything, it's going to look the same, but you're not going to get that same level part that you were doing in the demo. Yeah. Yeah. So it should look like it looks. You're just not going to actually encounter that same bit of story. Yeah. Um, But they have actually been hinting that there may be an expansion coming for the demo. A demo expansion? Yeah. Release the game, Christ. They're going to have an update for the demo because there's all these bits in the demo, if you've played it, you'll know what I'm talking about, where you find, like, a finger that has nowhere to go and things like that. And what they're saying... (laughs) they really put it. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they've done is they've actually (laughs) announced that there's um, a use for that coming soon in the demo. A use for that finger? Yeah. You just pop it in the oven at about 2.20 for 35 minutes. <laughs> Put it in a bit of bread, a bit of tomato sauce, some lovely, garlic. Lovely. Mm. Um, can I just interrupt your gaming? Yeah. Back to reality of, for a second. Yeah, for a little bit of social news. Social news? Yeah. Okay, so, go. Uh, Facebook Live. Yes. 
uh, currently there's a stream like as we're talking. Yeah, we're watching hit, it on the side of the computer. That hit 102,000 viewers. And it is an, an illegal yeah. feed of um, the Conor McGregor fight. But Conor also, McGregor? Did McGregor win it? Yeah, just. Like oh, it was a oh just... spoiler alert, guys. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and no, it's, it's all right for people listening because this has already happened. But for me, who was wanting to watch the UFC fighting, oh, you'll want to watch it. Yeah, it's a good fight. Happens. It's a really good fight. Yeah, I wasn't going to watch an illegal Facebook stream like you guys. <laughs> it's actually funny. Like throughout the whole time we've been talking, just watching the viewers, just clock up and clock, clock up and clock up. Yeah, yeah. So I I joined the stream and it was at two hundred and eighty nine <clears throat> viewers. Yeah. And then I'd periodically look back and it was like 4K, 8K, 25K. Yeah, and I saw peak at 102. Yeah. And then it just started dropping. That's impressive. The impressive part is the quality didn't drop. Yeah. On one stream. <laughs> Facebook are going to have the issues. Yep. Yeah, legal issues coming, impending. Yeah. It's the same thing that um, Periscope and that had when they first launched, though. So why isn't Facebook getting shut down for this? Yeah. You know, any other website would get shut down. Oh, no, let's take them all to court. Let's take all their money. Let's give them the full dot comage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's the FBI swinging through the fucking windows. (laughs) Turn it into a game. Are you standing up for dot com right now? No. (laughs) I'm I'm simply announcing that... Don't no, don't. I'm I'm not a sympathizer at all. Um, I just think it's funny that some places like uh, like torrent sites and stuff and mega yeah. upload that and are getting hammered all the time, and then you've got a thing like um, Dropbox or um, OneDrive Google doing Drive. doing all the same sorts of stuff. Um, you've got Facebook with illegal live streams happening. Why aren't yeah. they getting shut down like the other guys? Yeah, hey, it's it's. Oh, and, yeah. it's bloody annoying. A couple of years ago, I had a DVD shared with me on Google Drive that hadn't even been released yet. Like, it was a documentary that hadn't been released at all. Yeah. Like, not in cinemas, not on DVD. It was, hadn't been seen at all. And I had it shared with me on Drive. And that's how it was getting shared around, so it wasn't getting picked up. That's your code for porn, eh? Documentary. Yeah. No, no, no. It was, it was a wrestling documentary. Oh, <laughs> Which is practically porn for you. <laughs> Be cool. <laughs> if it gets hard watching wrestling. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, no. <laughs> no. Not, no, mate. No. So, is it like with consoles? Because now we've got the, the downloading thing. And I think Maddie actually brought this up um, when Xbox One and PlayStation 4 first came out, was it was going to prevent all of that. Um,. Bootlegging. What was going to prevent it? The release of Xbox One and PlayStation Four. How's it going to prevent bootlegging? Of games. Yeah, how? I don't understand because what you're saying. Isn't it all downloads now? No, nah, there's still physical discs. There's still plenty of physical discs, but I think the um, digital version is is going to be what it all becomes. I much prefer having a digital copy. Yeah, because I don't have to get up and swap the freaking disc. Discs. Yeah, but my problem is I still haven't expanded my hard drive, so I've got to constantly delete games and download them on shitty Australian internet. <laughs> but that's that's your choice, Philip. Yeah. You can always upgrade. Like there is a solution. And um, if you're here in New Zealand, all you need to do is is um, contact the good folks at Big Pipe, and they'll they'll sort you out some wonderfully fast internet. <laughs> I am jealous of your big pipe internet. Yeah. There's um, um, gigabit connections going to be coming up. Um, I don't know if big pipe are going to do them, um, but I see that there is, um, because you know how they had the Gigatown promotion? Yeah, yeah. and that was hold, holding back other towns. towns. Yeah, and that was stopping everyone else from being allowed to do it because of the contract they had for that competition. So that's running out soon, so... I Yay. imagine there'll be gigabit connections available soon enough. Yeah, yeah. so if I remember right, it was Tauranga, Hamilton, Te Amuru, Hawara, Hawara, <laughs> and there's one other town as well that already had gigabit ready waiting to go. Yeah. Yeah, like Cambridge or something. 
Yeah. It was all the places that um, the contracts held by UFF? Yeah. Yeah. Ultrafast Fiber. Yeah. There, so Ultrafast Fiber installs ready to go. Yeah, so here in Aussie, it's like... Um, we can't even talk gigabyte. Yeah, when you talk to them we about can't gigabyte, talk. they're like, no, you're lying. We can't even talk NBN. It's like a unicorn. Yeah. yeah no one believes us. What, there's a company here offering a free upgrade if you're on their top plan, and once the gigabit comes available, you'll get to go straight onto that for no extra charge. Oh, wow. Yeah. We tell Aussies over here. Yeah, but you tell them about 100 up, 100 down, and it's like a unicorn thing. It's like, yeah. I've heard of this, but I've never seen it. Like, whatever. Yeah. Well, I've got the wonderful 200 up, 200 down, and whenever I do a speed test, it's always in excess of that. It's like 220. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see your 200 up, 200 down and match you. Oh, okay, no, I don't match you at all. With 0.8 0. 0. down. down. <laughs> 0.2 no, no, no. up. With 3 point something down and we're 0. 0.8 up. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's gangster. That's, that's 1987. <laughs> That's when we're peaking too. Yeah. Yeah. We're literally on dollar. Yeah. <laughs> All right, back on games, Matt. Did you see the uh, new f- fractured but whole um, gameplay? <laughs> now I did, and I've also watched the behind the scenes uh, interviews and stuff with the creators of South Park. Yeah. Um, and they spent a long time trying to come up with a title where they could get away with saying butthole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fractured butthole. That's why it's called the fractured butthole. Uh, yeah. So they could say butthole, butthole. in the yeah. title. That's my favourite um, part of the whole thing. Is the, so, <laughs> is the it name. carries on exactly where the stick of truth left off, basically. You're the yeah. same new it's kid. It's the next day. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're still the new kid. Now they're onto a playing something different. Yeah. Um, and it's the power of your ass. And um, you can you can fart power and stuff. Have you seen the Noculus Rift? Oh my God, is this a movie about your dad? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a game. it's not a movie; it's a game. The game. Yeah. Have you seen the Noculus Rift videos? Is it the one of the the, <laughs> the one that goes over the nose so you can yeah. smell the farts? It's uh... hilarious. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. They've put so much effort into doing those videos. Yeah. Like full on clips of development and actual product and research and sniffing bums and yeah it's, it's awesome so i'm looking forward to that game because the first one was amazing it was it was good fun um if you're a fan of south park in general you'll probably like it um and if you're just a guy you'll probably like it because <laughs> it's the, about farting and swearing the last game was brilliant though and i think it was what was awesome about it is if historically South Park games have been shit. Absolute shit house. Yeah. And this is the first one that they've been hands on involved with writing the story, developing the game, and it came across like you're playing a South Park episode. Yeah. yeah. It looks gnarly. I'm quite yeah. keen to give that one a will. Any other games that have interest you piqued your interest? Piqued my interest. Um F1 2016 is out now. No Man's Sky is out now. We've got Deus Ex coming out on the 23rd of August. I've already said that's looking good. Um, Assetto Corsa officially, I think, launches 25th of August. Yeah. Um, and the end of the month, on the 30th, we've got World of Warcraft Legion. Um, the trailers for that look really cool, considering it's World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, I've never played World of Warcraft. Neither have I. I've never really looked into it. It's never been something that appeals but i think as um as they've gone on it seems to be getting more and more like a game that i might actually want to try see i've always had fear of that game purely because you see how many people just get really really addicted to it yeah i don't think that would work on me i think think i'm uh, immune to it but uh, the fact the fact you've got a day job to get up and go to in the morning Sadly, yeah, I'd much rather do this all day and um, play games and stuff. But... All right, so we've had some other big titles uh, drop their trailers in the last week, though. Uh, Watch Dogs 2. Yep, Watch Dogs 2. That looks um, pretty good. Yeah, you were a fan of the first one, though, weren't you? Yes and no. I liked it, but it, it didn't quite, you know, draw me in for the long haul. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Chris will be enjoyed. Uh, will enjoy this one. The new crew. Yeah, looking forward. Calling to that. all units. Calling all units. So it's the much more police intensive version. Yeah. So I'm actually surprised. I didn't expect them to develop any further on the crew. Why? Because although the people that have enjoyed it loved it, there wasn't many people who got into it in yeah. the first place. I, yeah, overall, got... a bit of a fail that game. Yeah. So I, it's got a really loyal um, following. Following. Yeah. Playership. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it, it sort of falls in between a few different styles. It's it's not quite a sim. It's it's not quite arcade. You yeah. know, so people that lean one way or the the other didn't really like it, but it did kind of hit a lot in the middle. Yeah, and because I'm not really a big card game player, but I actually like this one. It had a bit of a storyline, um, and it gave me the opportunity to just fuck around as well. Yeah. And then discover lots of shit. Go treasure hunting. <sighs> See, it's all about think, finding stuff with you guys. Yeah, but I think you'd <laughs> enjoy uh, Forza Horizon. No, because that's hard out. No, 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 it's not. It? No, Forza Horizon is driving around discovering races and discovering missions. Yeah, but it's and discovering stuff like that. races. This is discovering items. Yeah, but you're also going around discovering races too. And, yeah, it's, but and it looks races better. Is to complete the storyline. Forza Horizon looks better. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Horizon 3. It comes out uh, in about five weeks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the other one I was going to bring up, Matt. Steep. And- Nope. Have you seen the trailer for Steep? No, I haven't. No, what's Steep? It's um, one that is um, on a mountain, and it's really steep. <laughs> and it's covered in snow, and you can do snow, uh, like skiing and um, wingsuit stuff, flying down the mountains. Is it going to be like Cool Borders? 1080. I really want a new Cool Borders I loved that game. It was I never got into 1080. Awesome. Yeah, 1080 was. I never, had a, I never had a Nintendo 64. Neither. <laughs> <laughs> I used to borrow other people's. <laughs> uh, it's the Maoriness coming through there, Chris. Yeah. It's in your genes. It's it's not so much the Maori as it is the Povo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and also, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, Zombies in Spaceland. Who cares? Fuck zombies. Uh, it's taken it to the next level of stupid, hasn't it? This is Call of Duty? Yeah. Yeah, they've got a Snapchat folder. Some people oh. absolutely love that zombie rubbish. I'm just so over the zombie stuff. I like zombie stories, like Resident Evil and... What's the other one? Silent Hill... Yeah, Silent Hill's not zombies, though. Yeah, it's just a monster. Monsters. Maybe Xbox will pull out a, a Forza Motorsport 6 Zombies. Well, and you can drive around running over zombies. Well, they could just do Forza... I like plants and Forza zombies. Rising. Forza, Forza Dead, Dead Rising. Dead Rising. Dead Rising. That'd be awesome. Dead Horizon. Ah, there we go. There we go. Um, but... If you go to hashtag me.co.nz and have a look at the seen the trailer post, there is a picture of a trailer. <laughs> also, there's a few trailers on there. And if you look <laughs> beneath it, if you click on that one, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are nine videos there you can watch. Yeah. Wow. They're all new trailers. Including from- Steep, the Mountain is Yours. For Honor, Viking Samurai and Night Factions, Watch Dogs 2, uh, The Crew Calling All Units, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands, Assetto Corsa, I, admit, I haven't read really that one yet, um, and two videos there for South Park The Fractured But Whole. That's including the Nosculus Rift trailer? Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a gameplay trailer and a Nosculus Rift video. There's a yeah. whole whole series of those Nosulus Rift videos, um, but we've just shared one on the website. Um, and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Zombies in Space Land. Um, it's a 1980s um, space-themed theme park with zombies. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, I think this week wasn't talking about the theme parks. Wasn't Nuka World announced a, like actually gameplay show this week? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, that one's not in there. I think we've got a separate post for that one. If you go to hashtag me.co.nz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and look for Fallout 4 Nuka World. I'm pretty sure. I'm just going to double check. Yes. Yes, there is a trailer video in there as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we've also got heaps of news about other tech and gaming stuff on the website. Check it out. Indeed. If- if you follow us on Facebook or Twitter, which I'm going to assume you already do, hashtag Radio NZ, um, you'll be updated whenever a new post is on the website as well. Yes, yes you will. Exciting awesome. times. Anyway, um, is that just about us for this week? I think it is. Um, mm. Did you guys have anything else that you wanted to get out there? No. I think that's it for us. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Beautiful. What a show. <laughs> We're icing this. Even with your wonky shit internet. Yeah, wonky <laughs> shit internet and no professional microphones at the moment. We have got them on order. Yeah. Coming. Stand by for a substantial audio upgrade. Yeah. We've got the we've got the new mixer, so we just need the good microphones to go with it now and we'll be sorted our end. Yeah, and then we can make it all nice in your ears for you. Mm. You'll listen back on these ones and go, wow, how did we how- tolerate that terrible audio quality? <laughs> I was going to say how far they've come. <laughs> and that. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Kakita. Hashtag me.co.nz.